The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access for Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Chapin. She was a child actor during the days of Father Knows Best. Lauren, are you there? I am, Patty. Um, good afternoon. Good to talk with you. Good to hear your voice. You have a good voice. Thank you very much. You do too. Uh, yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too humble for my own self. But, you know. <laughs> well, I see a picture of you. You're looking good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, for being 100 years old, not too bad. Well, how long has it been since you've been on Father Knows Best? How many oh years? Oh my gosh, forever. Many years. Uh, I think the last shows we did was 1978. Mm. Oh no, in 1980 was the last show we did. 1980? Yeah. We did a uh, seven hour Father Knows Best Father's Day special. And was, uh, were they all there? Uh, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody was there but Mr. Young. It was Miss Wyatt, Eleanor, Billy, and I. Oh. And uh, the, Mr. Young did a telephone call in. Oh, well, he was still around. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I bet you were like a family with them. You can't work with people as many years as we work together and not be a family, of course. When you did know. you first start? How old were you? I have no clue. Oh. <laughs> okay, what I, year? I was a child. Let's say that. I was a very young little child. Oh, you did a very good job being an actress on this. Thank show. you. Thank you. And really, I had no training. So no. that was all a la naturel. Well, that was, you had a lot of energy, girl. You had yeah. A lot of energy. Still do. Oh, my. Still do. My daughter often comments, Mom. You know, you're 34 years older than me, and you have more energy than I do. I said, well, I don't know what to tell you, Summer, you know. You well, have to, oh, that's her name. That's a nice name. Yeah, her name's Summer. And uh, You had her during the summer? I had her on Father's Day, June oh. 15th. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I was going to name her Megan Summer. And uh, when she came out, I thought she was going to look like her brother. I thought she was going to have dark hair and dark eyes. And uh, in fact, she came out toe head with green eyes. And I went, oh, she's not a Megan. Doesn't oh. look like a Megan. So I said, she looks like a Summer. So I named her Summer. And then the name I had if I was having a boy was Seth Ryan. Oh. So I named her Summer Ryan. Oh. R-I-A-N-N, Summer Ryan. Mm -hmm. Both worlds, great. Yeah, oh. exactly. Um, what happened during the time you were with uh, Father Knows Best? I mean, how close did you get to everybody, did, especially to Mr. Robert Young? Well, he, he, actually, he was like my father. <laughs> he was a wonderful, wonderful man. and. Um, you know, I think because I didn't really have a father figure in my home, he became my father. And uh, oftentimes I would go home with him on the weekend and uh, spend time with he and his uh, wife and his daughter, Carol and Barbara and Betty Lou and Kathy. So they were my uh, home away from home family. It was a lot of fun. Do you still keep in touch with the rest of the gang? I keep in touch with as many people as I possibly can. I really do. You know, you want to keep those uh, ties that bind. You want to keep them happy and healthy, and you know that's part of your life. Does your kids? I mean, how many kids you got? Just one? Uh, no, no. I have a 39-year-old uh, son. Mm -hmm. I have a 33-year-old daughter. Right. I have uh, one, two, three, four. 
four other adopted children that didn't adopt me through the courts, but they adopted me as as their mommy. Oh. And uh, so they range from age 33 up to age 39. And I have um, four grandchildren, all boys. Oh my. Just had a new one on January 1st. You're a starting, New Year's baby. Mm -hmm. You're starting to make up a baseball team here. Absolutely. I'm telling you. And they're all great. I love them. Do oh, they all have green eyes too? Pardon? Do they have green eyes as well? Um, I think the newest one is going to have green eyes. And the first oldest boy has green eyes. Mm. And uh, the other ones have blue eyes. Uh, and one brown eyed. So we have green eyed, blue eyed, brown eyed. And that's the way it is in my family, too. Uh, oh. My brothers uh, were toehead uh, with blue eyes. My mother was a redhead with green eyes. My father was black Irish with jet black hair and black eyes, and I look like him. So I have his coloring. And um, all of my nieces and nephews are green eyed, blue eyed, and uh, no yeah. brown eyed. No brown eyed? No, I'm the only brown eyed. I'm part yeah. Irish myself, you know. Yeah, are you? Oh my goodness, yes. Irish what? What is your other well, combo? Uh, <laughs> well, I'm Canadian. Oh, Canadian, uh-huh. Mm, my dad You're was... You're a Canuck. <laughs> <laughs> my dad was born in Quebec, you know. Ah, uh, yeah, oui. Oh, uh, allez-vous manger? Un petit peu, François. Ah, me too. Yes, <laughs> 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 Anyways, <laughs> he was born in Montreal. My grandparents were born in Glasgow, Scotland, eh? But, uh, uh -huh. yeah. Well, that's where we come from also. Isn't that funny, Patty? Your we're, people we're from French, Sc Irish, um, Scottish. Right. We're the McClellan clan. Oh. We come from Glasgow, Scotland. Oh, my stars. Uh, we come from England. Same so, here. So, you know, I mean, we, we're all European. We're Europeans. We're that a come mess. Here. In the United States, <laughs> absolutely. <Canuck> Europeans. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, uh, I'm Canadian, Irish, Scottish, English, German, Hungarian, Romanian, wow. and Spanish. Wow. Really? Ah. Oh. Now, are you in touch with, with the Romanian side at oh, all? Oh, I would love to, but I, I've never been overseas, eh? Oh, I'm well, why don't you come to Israel with us in October? This October? Yes. I take a tour over there. I try to take a tour every uh, year, mm. and we bring people from here. Now, we have an orphanage um, that I help support in Romania, and so we'll go two weeks to Israel mm -hmm. and then one week in Romania. This year, we're working on bringing doctors and nurses oh, yeah. with us so that they can do a medical clinic with our orphanage kids. And get them healthy in Romania and my spiritual mom is uh, she is Romanian so you know she speaks Romanian and uh -huh. she's taught me a little bit of uh, her Romanian so I, I know how to say te you best draga and, and that means that means I love you very much ah. so um, those are important words to share with anybody you yeah. know I don't know any Romanian or Hungarian Mm. But Mom said we had a wee bit of uh, gypsy in us. Oh, yes. Well, yeah, that's okay. I think we all have a little bit of gypsy in us. I know I do. It is the Blarney. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you have Scottish, too? Yeah. I have yeah. a McDonald's of Glencoe. Oh, the McDonald's of Glencoe. We're the ones that have the wee bit of a, a feud with the Campbells. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's, it, isn't it wonderful to go back in your history and kind of check out, you know, when I was doing the Chapin genealogy, um, I realized that um, way, way back, all the way to the 1800s, yeah. all of my great-grandfathers, great-great-great-great-great-grandfathers, all the way back to the 1800s, they were all deacons. Oh, wow. And until the 1900s. Right. During the 1900s, somehow that that line broke, and um, no more did it say anything about their faith, their religion, or anything. And it wasn't until 1981 when I became an evangelist. I'm 
licensed and ordained uh, oh, in the in the good. assembly churches, full gospel churches, and um, so then I picked the lineup. So it stopped in the 1900s up until 1981 when I started the line again, and I hope that either my son or my daughter or my grandchildren will carry on, you know, our, our past. Oh, um, I have a question I was just asked. Um, there's a clip that uh, John Forcer, Force, John Force had sent, I'm sorry, Force, I mean, Force uh, had sent. Uh, Elizabeth, you can play that clip right now if you wish, and we can be able to talk after this. Great. How about that? We can talk about after this. Great. Revisit the golden days of television when father knew best. The reason they don't swim backwards is because they wind up the same place going forward. Spend an intimate evening with award-winning actress Lauren Chapin. And when they saw my screen cast unanimously, they all said, that's her. Celebrated American icon actress who starred as Kitten in the all-American classic TV series, Father Knows Best. Hi, Daddy. Bye, Daddy. Whoa. Remember me? Sure, Daddy. I can never forget you. How about a kiss to pay for your room and board and laundry? <laughs> okay, Faye. Hear stories about behind-the-scenes secrets and be touched by her story of overcoming obstacles of fame and fortune. As seen in E. Hollywood's number three watched made-for-TV two-hour special. This is a tale about the ravages of fame, the horror of abuse, and the ultimate triumph of the human spirit. This is the story of Lauren Chapin, the E. True Hollywood story. You will be uplifted. We're slaying those giants. That's standing on the way. You will be inspired by meeting Lauren Chapin live. Yeah. Well, we are back. So what was the clip? Tell me what the clip was. Well, um, <clears throat> it was one of them. Um, this lasted about a minute. So it was a pretty good one. And I've seen a picture of you. Uh, the the uh, screen is split in half. Picture of you wearing your uh, black uh, sparkle dress. Uh huh. And me wearing my red and black. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I'd like to know more about you being ordained. W uh, where was this that you were ordained? In Colorado, Denver, Colorado. Oh, you're from Colorado. Well, actually, no. I'm no. from California, oh, and right. I went through school in California. Right. But um, I had been in ministry for about, uh, I had been traveling and speaking in churches, and um, one of the pastors that was on my board um, said, Lauren, and, you know, it's time that you become ordained, and, you know, then when you do that, then you need to go finish your school and get licensed, and, you know, you need to be pedigreed, my darling. <laughs> and I said, all right. <laughs> so, you know, I had a beautiful ordination. Uh, it was just beautiful. And uh, so they did it up at their home church in, in Denver, Colorado. Do you marry? Uh, I marry, I bury, yeah. and... Uh, I give birth, but not from my loins. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> so you do baptisms. Pardon? Baptisms. Yes, 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 yes. <clears throat> wow. All of the above. How long have you been an ordained minister? Since 1981. Oh, that's a good long time. Yeah, yeah, just a, just a wee bit of a time in all actuality, it seems like. Yeah. You know, because every day with the Lord is just... Uh, it's heaven, you know? And what would I do without the Lord? I think about that. Don't you? Don't yes. you think about what would I do right now in this situation, this day, without the Lord? How would it be different? It what would, would my heart be like? It would be awful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we go through hell and back as we grow up. But uh, with the Lord, we know we are, we are safe. Absolutely. 
and we are strong and he gives us dominion over the enemy you know so we know that we can fight a fight and come out on the winning end even though it's difficult we know we're going to have the victory that's right yeah. you know so without hope people live in this world and we see the world becoming more anxious more angry more um <clears throat> short fused you know more unkind mm -hmm. less less humbleness you know uh, more arrogance and and you sit and you think i i don't want to be a part of that world no i don't want to be a part of that mm -hmm. i'd rather be mm -hmm. on on jesus's side you know i often think i don't know if you do this <clears throat> at all patty but you know i always think like you know, people who are not saved, what do they think? What do they think of me? What do they think of my faith? What's going on in their brain? And I think, you know, what if, and I've had people say this to me, well, how do you know your way is true? How do you know that there's a God? How do you know that you're going to go to heaven? And I tell them, I know by faith. I know that I believe by faith the Word of God, but even if I didn't have the Word of God to be a road map for me, I would still by faith believe that God created this earth, that He created me to have fellowship with Him, and that God sent His Son to die for my sins, because I know I'm a sinner, and I know that I fall short of His glory. So I know that Jesus came and he took upon his body my diseases, my sins, that when I came to him and when I was baptized, when I received him, that all of the old was passed away and behold, the new came forth. But I also know this, that if I didn't have that, if I didn't have Jesus, you know, I would rather err on the side, this, this is my thought, I would rather err on the side of God than to err on the side without God. So whether I had Christ or not, whether I had God or not, I would want to follow this book called the Bible because it's, it's tr to me truth, it is to me life, it is to me a light, for when I'm in darkness, it is for me a light that sets me free from the condemnation that the enemy puts on me. Jesus said, "You have therefore there is no condemnation for those that are in him. So I choose to believe there is a God. I choose to believe there is a Christ. I choose to believe that the Holy Spirit is my comforter. I choose to believe that the Word of God, though written by a man, though it is not 100% correct all the time, but I believe that the words that Christ spoke are true for me. And I'm going to err on that side of life rather than to err on the side of darkness and satanic dominion, lustful thoughts, lustful actions, depravity of mind, you know, sinful of nature, just totally in living in an abyss. I don't want to err there. I want to be on the right side. So for me, God is real, Jesus is real, and so is the Holy Spirit. She's back. Hey, kid. Here we are. Yeah, we're back again. We were temporarily off the air for a couple of seconds here. But, you know, it's great. It is so great to uh, to uh, see you. Um, so what, what is in your future? Well, let me tell you something. Um, I have a one-woman show that I'm doing right now, and uh, it is uh, kind of interesting for the people that come to watch me. Um, it's a walk down of Nostalgia Road. I show a film on my brother Michael and my brother Billy, and um, it tells you, you know, so many people say, how did you get into show business? You know, uh, it, it, you know who got you into business? So I show them this wonderful film on Michael and Billy and, and all the movies and all the television shows that they've done. 
and uh, then of course it shows me and, and my show and what I've done and then I have a, a secret film that I show after that and I don't tell anybody what it is and uh, they it's it's just an amazing amazing show and then I come out and I greet the audience and I talk about what it was like growing up on a studio lot, what it was like to be a little girl meeting all these different stars and how they impacted my life. And then I talk about, you know, how I grew up and the, the people that I grew up with. And uh, it's just, it's such a wonderful time. I take questions and answers from the audience and uh, it's fun. It's a very happy, fun, hour and a half show and I'm traveling I'm hoping to travel maybe you would like to invite me to your area either to do the show in one of your your big uh, theaters there or in a church you know I can I have it styled so one part of the show I can show and then share my testimony uh, for churches and then for the public I do uh, the nostalgia walk so, um, Patty, I know, I know put I'm on your thinking cap. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and contact everybody that you can. Yes. And tell them, let's get Lauren out here. Yes. Um, I know of some churches who might be interested. Wonderful. So, uh, I'll give it a go. And, uh, I'll be able to let them know that uh, we want you here, woman. Thank you. Thank you. I would love to come. We want I we would have a good time, Patty, you and I, as sisters in the Lord, we'd have some great time. You know, my husband uh, was going to the seminary here at the Lutheran Church. I'm Lutheran. Oh, wonderful. So, uh, yeah, he took a course. He did all right. He's not. But isn't it wonderful, Patty? It doesn't matter if you're Catholic. doesn't matter if you're Lutheran. doesn't matter if you're Methodist, Baptist, Pentecostal, Church of God. You know what? Jesus Christ isn't concerned with that. What he's concerned with is your soul and yes. your faith. Yes. Not your name, not your religious name. Yes. Okay, Just who you are in him. And so when we get to heaven, he's going to say, Patty, yes. you old Lutheran girl, get up here. No, he's not going to say that. <laughs> he's going to say, Patty, my daughter, come on up. Yes. He'd say, so that's yes. what's important. That is very important right there. Yeah. Right. And, you know, can you still hear me? I can hear you, I honey. I uh, a moment there. I thought everything went blank. Do you know what? Where, where are you located? Tell me where you're located. I'm located right downtown Fort Wayne, Indiana. In a Fort library. Wayne, Indiana. Main, it's a main library. Is okay. that where Sandy Patty is from? Sandy Patty from Fort Wayne, Indiana? I don't know. I never met her. Oh, she's, oh, oh you is know she what? She's a lovely lady. My daughter has a uh, five octave range, and she, she sang Sandy Patty's songs when she was 10 years old. Oh, wow. And uh, she's a color tourist soprano, and I'm telling you, she and Sandy Patty ought to do a concert together. Uh, beautiful voices. God just blessed both of them, and I love Sandy. She's been a very nice friend to us, and so we love her very deeply. So, um, I haven't heard song singing from Sandy Patty in years. Yeah, I think that she took a respite. I think uh, that you know, there. I think she sang so much and did so much, and sometimes. Uh, when you're in ministry and, and you're in the limelight um, as much as she was in the limelight, um, you have to take a break and you have to just reconnect with your God and with yourself and get you back on solid ground again. And um, I think maybe Sandy took some time off to do that, you know? And be with her family, of course. Absolutely, yes. Oh, she has some beautiful children, and, you know, she's just, she's a good mommy. Well, I know that you're a good mommy, too. Oh, you don't know that, but I try to be. <laughs> well, you seem to be a nice person. I say, too. <laughs> I hope I am. I hope I am. My children love me, so, you know, I'm happy with that. And my grandbabies love me, too. I'm, in, I'm enamored with my newest grandbaby because he's only three months old. Three months old. 
three months old and he's like almost 15 pounds. Oh my <laughs> he's such a big boy. And he just coos and he, he just, oh, he's such a wonderful boy. He calls, all my grandchildren call me Nani. And Nani in Romanian means big sister. Okay. And uh, so I'm their Nani. And uh, I can't wait until my newest grandbaby's name is Keegan, K-E-E-G-A-N. And he just coos at me. He's the best disposition baby. He it reminds me of my son when my son was a little boy. Uh, people used to say, can we take Matthew to dinner with us? <laughs> when he was like, you know, two years old, going through the terrible twos, he never did. Oh. But he had impeccable manners at the dinner table and just, he was a delight. And uh, people would say, oh, can we take him and show him off? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Oh, can't oh, do that. No. I tell you, it's a blessing. So, do you have children, Patty? No, I never did have any children. Okay. Well, you know that's all right. Do you have children that are not yours from your womb, but you love them and they love yeah. you? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. see. I have to Those are just cats. as important. I have three cats. I have cats too. What yeah. type of cats do you have? Um, um, all of them, no, two of the brothers are from California. We lived in California for 11 years. Oh, wonderful. And one is from Charlotte, North Carolina, where we lived there. So they're, they're 11 and 7. Oh, wow. Well, I have uh, two cats right now, and one little Brussels Griffon slash pug dog. And I just adopted my new boy cat. And uh, he's really interesting looking. He's um, now a year old, but he has a, a, a gray, short-haired body with one inch thick, vertical and diagonal, black stripes. Oh, and, and his tail stands straight up and then lays flat right on his back. And I've never seen a cat like this in my life. No. And he's wonderful. His name is Herbie. Herbie. Uh, Lauren, I hate to do this, but this is finally the half over. It's half hour is over. Well, it has been fun, Patty. I have to have you on again. Okay. Can I? You may. This next Anytime. Time. Give uh, me a call. Okay. Love you. Bye. Love you. God bless you, dear. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you for coming on to my show. And thank you and God bless to everyone for coming into my studio. Thank you. God bless. Lauren?